Hey, what is up? And welcome to Cinetracer 2 version. Let's walk over to the slate here. 0, 03.0, 0, the building update. We see that we have a new building map, a flats tool, work in progress name, paint tool, and a delete tool. You can actually delete things now, incredible. And generally in our hub map, you want to go to the building map to check out any of this new stuff. The older pre-built maps, they're back here. They still work. You can go in there. However, we're starting to change how things work to accommodate the building system. So we're going to walk up to our magical lens case and be whisked away to a brand new uh, virtual sound stage. This is our building stage. Uh, for quick orientation over there is our portal back to the hub. And this right here, we're t we'll turn off all the space lights. It's very dark if you do that, of course and turn them back on. So the building tool, we're gonna to go over this workflow now, needs to be conducted on this white square. You can only build in the white square and there's a fixed grid above you for lighting, which we'll look at as well. So we walk over to our building um, area here and we're gonna hit J. And the idea with this is that you're going to be looking down at these different floor grids that appear and depending on where you're standing, where you're looking, where you're pointing, you're going to get, be able to put down a wall. So I'm going to left click. There are some sound effects, some of them a little bit loud. We put down a wall and then we could put down another one over here. What you can't do is put a wall where there already is a wall. That's what this is trying to illustrate here. You can then hit E and this is going to change which type of wall you're going to put down. This is a door and our only other one is a, a window at the moment. So I'm gonna place a window, then I'm gonna go back to the regular wall, turn this way, and then I'll put a door here, a regular wall, and we're gonna make a little small set here like this. I'm gonna hit R to get out. That is the flats tool, the building tool. You don't place floors, the floors are here. We're not doing ceilings yet. All you're doing is placing these essentially four foot by 12 foot flats. That is the rough dimension of what those are uh, in this kind of boxy grid configuration. The idea for this is to be simple, fast, um, not necessarily perfectly to scale with a relocation. However, I think you can get pretty close using this. So the next thing we want to look at after the build tool, we want to look at the material tool, the paint tool. The names are still work in progress and the hotkeys are on the left in the middle for now. So let's hit K and there's going to be some loading and we get this uh, paint roller tool here. So if we point at a wall, uh, we will get wall materials and we can use E and Q again to start cycling through these different colors. These colors look a little funny until you put a quote unquote real light in the scene, which we will do momentarily. Uh, I am partial to this kind of uh, green color here. I kind of like this one, but I think the demo in the thumbnail uses this darker blue, which darker blue does look pretty good. Uh, we'll go with this one. We're going to left click and one by one apply. You can't, sometimes it won't register if it's like on the window dressing or for instance, like the door, it doesn't like the door. But if you point at the walls, generally, we're going to be able to apply this material. If you point at the floor, you're going to get floor materials. So you can cycle through a couple of these. There will be more. Uh, we're going to go with dark here and we're going to individually on the tile, click, click, left, click, left, click, left, click. And then we can hit R and we're back in our like normal hand tool. There is a door in this one. Um, however, this door won't save yet. It's kind of a work in progress there. So we've built a rather simple three wall set. We've changed the material of the floor. We've changed the material of the walls. Keep in mind that each one of these segments is about four feet wide, or it's actually 128 centimeters wide for now. Uh, we might have some measurement tools in the future. So let's do uh, a little bit of lighting by bringing out a naked metahuman. And we'll just place our uh, talent right there. And let's do two things. Let's add an overhead light using the lighting grid and let's add a light behind the window to make it look like it's daytime outside. So I'm going to hit tab and we're going to grab, hmm, I'm going to grab this first LED. So what we do is we left click, we pick it up and where does it go? Above us. Each one of these little glowing clamps here can have a light attached to it. Um, I've sort of noticed that we can't quite always get the center. It depends how you build the set, but we'll just put it say there for now. 
Uh, while it's up there, got to be looking up at it. We're going to change to a different modifier, the lantern. We're going to go to pan, rather tilt. And we're going to tilt it all the way down until we have it 90 degrees down, like this. So now we actually have, quote unquote, real light on the set combined with the kind of overhead ambient lights we have on now, the space lights. And now you can really appreciate the color of the walls. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is grab one of these frame lights, which still spawns pretty odd. <laughs> I haven't changed how that works. We're going to left click it to pick it up, spin it around with Q and E and left click again, dropping it right there. What will this look like through here? White, like a like you would commonly do on a stage. This is representing just like daytime outside, that sort of thing. So we have our basic lighting. This is very similar to the lighting that is like present on the pre-built sets that we've built ourselves uh, in the configuration that we want. Uh, let's move on to some other new things about the system is that we have for the first time L, if you hit L, a delete tool, which does exactly what you think it would when you click it. I'll just do it to, to illustrate. We're gonna click, disappear, disappear. Uh, our actors can disappear, the lights can be deleted. Everything, I believe everything should be deletable now. So that's nice, definitely something that needed to happen, but the delete tool came with this new, um, essentially redesign of how tools work in general. So we're going to build a slightly different set now. I'm gonna build, um, a wall like this, and we'll build this uh, little extra area over here uh, to illustrate some other kind of nuances of the system. So now we have a small two wall set, and I'm gonna hit K, uh, let it load the materials in for a second, and we'll make uh, these a different floor. This is a slightly different tile. It's bigger, it's much shinier as well. Uh, we'll choose the um, back of this wall, and what I'm gonna do is hit F, and you'll see that there's categories. And if you uh, Q and E between these categories, there's some like very bright colors, there's some archivist stuff, and then there's the wall paints. They do take time to load in the first time. So I'm hit F and we'll see that we have some, well, basically the same floor materials. I'm gonna add more of these over time, but we're gonna use the same exact material on the walls like this. And where, well, we kind of went through the wall there, but we're clicking on the wall. And so we've changed our floor materials. We have a wood three by three over here, and a tile like two by three is what's happening. And something to pay attention to is that this side is tiles of this wall. This side is white here. So I'll hit K and we'll go find that blue. You do have to like kind of roll all the way down here. Uh, these are kind of art directed blues or paint colors in general that I think look good for um, different paint colors of an interior. And we have kind of the quintessential build here. Like the general goal of this system is to be able to get to a set like this rather quickly, where we have two different floors, two different rooms with two different walls, and you're able to um, visualize roughly um, a lot of interiors. If you're thinking about this like it's a sound stage, you can light from above with the grid. And if you're thinking of this more like a real location, of course, there's a lot of variance in ceiling heights. Generally, this ceiling height, as shown by the crown molding here, is high. These flats are maybe about 12 feet tall, uh, 384 centimeters. Um, so that ceiling illustrated here is probably like 11 feet, something like that. So on, on the high side, certainly. Um, I'll be making it adjustable in the future. That This is the thought is to make it adjustable so that we can bring the ceiling down to like more like 8 feet, 9 feet, 10 feet. Those are more common interior uh, heights for interior, like real locations, not stages. But for stages, this is this is kind of common, uh, or at least this does exist out there. So uh, that is the building system, the material system, and also the grid that's above it. This grid is not perfectly adequate. It is based on a 12 inch box truss, but um, the points are still not perfectly adequate for uh, what's needed here. So I'm still working out like what the ideal grid will be. Uh, in the future, perhaps you'll be able to customize and add your own grid on top of it. But for now, I need to have a pre-built one that makes sense to start. So what isn't present is furniture. That will be the next update is adding furniture to this cabinets, couches, etc. They're going to, the actors will just snap onto it, that sort of stuff. Um, but I think this was enough to get out there. This was a, a rather large update. And I'm going to just illustrate the saving system and how this uh, interacts with the set as well. And that's fine here. And uh, let's bring out a camera, still our only camera, um, hoping soon to be building uh, the next camera, there will be 
probably a lot. I, I like building the cameras. They're fun and, and we need more types of cameras soon. Cranes, floating cameras, etc. So here we are in uh, an odd shot. I, I don't know why we would film something like this, but here we are in a wide shot and we're going to hit enter. And this is going to save the entire scene, including the set now. And that screenshot is in your my documents folder. Uh, let's get out and we're going to hit K and let's just like change this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to pick a different wall color and you know, maybe we're illustrating purple is going to be interesting, but we'll, we'll go purple. Um, we're illustrating a different art direction for the director, perhaps for, for someone, I don't know who. And, um, that is how this system is designed is for being able to illustrate and iterate through like different, um, setups of lighting where the actors are, etc. Uh, as quickly as possible. And I am just randomly picking materials. These are not uh, being thought about. So here's a slightly different coloring um, for no reason at all, other than for having it be different. I'm going to move that light there. We'll still have the light in the background. And let's really quickly um, add a sort of ugly key light, but in a, just to try to add some new stuff to show how the saving system is working. Uh, we're going to add a modifier to this and the light stand itself needs to go up and you know, it is a setup. It's an odd setup. It's a very odd setup, but here we are. We've built a purple room and a wood room next to it with some pretty odd lighting, but we've changed the setup. Things are brighter now. Uh, I'll continue to ISO down and uh, it's a little nauseating to move while looking through it on this dolly. So we just go back to this view. We're going to, scoot up a little bit, um, click to left focus on our character. And here we are. This is what we've created today. I'm going to hit enter to create our second shot and save the scene a second time. Uh, so we're going to hit B to review the setups we've done. We'll go to the previous shot. Uh, we'll see that the set has returned. Things were still loading. Uh, the set has returned to its previous state. The light is still attached to the ceiling and uh, the materials changed and our, our camera has gone back. Then we can go to the last shot we made. It's beautiful. It's the purple room. Welcome to the purple room with the wood room next to it. And uh, we've done essentially the whole workflow there. Uh, as a reminder for now, this menu needs a lot of love, needs to be completely redesigned and made better. But to save this, you need to hit save shot list give it a name and then actually hit save again. And then you're able to load it back from there. Uh, that's the same from the previous tutorial or version uh, 0 0.20. Nothing's changed about that. So that is the building system. Um, I would say the most requested thing um, as it was accumulating that some sort of building system uh, needed to happen. And so next again, will be props so that you can place props in there and build out a rough version in four foot increments, a rough version of the set you're going to build, of the location you're going to do. It of course won't be exactly to scale or perfect and have every feature, but generally a lot of rooms are square and hopefully this will get us through the beginning of Cinetracer 2's building system. It can always get more complicated, but I worked hard to actually keep it simple so that it doesn't take too much time to learn it. That wraps it up for this video. I'll see you on the next one. Look forward hopefully to the furniture tool, maybe a new camera, and maybe an overhaul again to the saving system and the tool system overall. Those are roughly the things I'm kind of zeroing in on. I'll check you on the next one. Peace.